Ah, that's a little tough. <laughs> is that is that another meeting or? I, I, I don't know. Anthony was not um, available today, so. Um, yes. Is, so, do you know whether he's planning to come to our subcommittee meeting tomorrow? Or Friday? I um, can ask him again. Is it tomorrow or Friday? I thought it's tomorrow. I think it's tomorrow, right? It's tomorrow. Yeah. Thursday. And I don't. Um, I thought you had said that you didn't think he needed to come, but. Yeah, no, I didn't think we needed him, but I thought you had said he'd be here at this meeting. Um, and I thought he was can, too, but. Yeah, okay. It may be that we can relay a question or two through you. Mm -hmm. We're waiting from, hi everybody, by the way. Hi. Um, we're waiting for one more? One more, yeah. Okay, if I could just excuse myself for one second and I'll be right back. This is grandson night. I got a little something to do first. <laughs> and Mr. Ross, I think I, I called your your handsome grandson, daughter, a granddaughter. <laughs> oh, you're on mute. They're they're both boys. They're two, yeah, and I call I call one of them granddaughter. <laughs> no. Yeah, I know. No. I messed up. <laughs> No offense taken. That's so beautiful, <laughs> adorable, though. <laughs> well, you know, it's that, you know, mom is from India. Yes, yeah. That's beautiful, beautiful. Special multiracial mix. Yeah. You're having your dinner, Mr. Ross? Are you I'm eating your... a few chips. Chips. I'm eating I, a few chips. So I, I, can, so hear, I, I can hear everything. I'm jealous. I haven't had my dinner yet. No, that, You're making me hungry. <laughs> I'll stop. I'll stop. I'm just joking. <laughs> I ate dinner already. I did. <laughs> I, I'm just teasing you. Oh, there's Miss Tashina. So I'm going to move okay, her so. over. Well, Mr. Wiley just stepped up. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Good evening, Ms. Tashina. Hi. Hi. Hi, Tashina. Hi. So we, we have a forum now. Back. Yes. All right. Ready to start, Ms. Moyston? I am. You know, I'm just going to, you can get started. I'm going to turn my camera off because I'm going to um, move it to my desk which uh is a stand up okay so we have deborah hi deborah hi how Where's are deborah you? hi are so you we're live now right yes thank okay. you great good evening everyone good evening good evening a lovely evening to spend together <laughs> once again and uh before I take roll, I want to uh, set the time for the start of our meeting. It's 5.34 p.m. on Wednesday, February 10th. And begin our meeting by taking a roll call. And glad you all are here. Uh, Ms. Owen? Here. Ms. Pat? Here. Mr. Vernon Jones? Here. Ms. Ferreira? Here. Ms. Bowman? Here. Thank you. Thank you all for being here and thanks always for all of your work. Um, just some quick opening remarks. <clears throat> it's, getting, it's getting very busy here <laughs> with our work. Um, a lot of you are uh, all of us, I should say, are putting in extra time thinking about uh, different things and working very diligently um, on this. The community is getting more and more involved in our work and paying attention thanks to your outreach and what you're doing. So I want to just thank you for that. And I want to welcome um, our guests um, as they come in, certainly, and welcome their, their comments and contributions. I also want to say before we start, I want to 
thank on behalf of the Community Safety Working Group, Ms. Moyston, for her continued efforts to support us with meeting notes and the collection of input and resources from the community. It's a daunting task, I know, but, uh, and others have expressed this too, Ms. Moyston, to you. So um, they can all individually speak to that themselves, certainly, but we wanna thank you and uh, we appreciate everything you're, you're doing. And uh, you're very good at it, by the way, I might add. Why, thank you, and it's my pleasure. Yes, glad, glad you're doing it and glad you're with us. Hi, Alicia. Welcome. So with that, a very quick agenda review. We have a, a, a busy agenda as always. We're going to go into uh, very quickly after um, we re uh, approve the minutes of the meetings to our public comment and any uh, member comments that we wanna state before we start. And then our agenda is gonna include an, an update on the bid process. And I, I wanna just put together both A and B in our agenda. Um, I don't know, uh, Ms. Moisten, if you can put that up at some moment, but uh, there's an update on the bid uh, contract itself. And then there's some discussion needed certainly on um, phase two, which I think this would be a good time to sort of combine those two items together and get, get some input from our, our group on uh, current steps and next steps. We've been receiving in item three, we've been receiving uh, quite a bit of input from our community uh, members. And uh, we're gonna take a look, look at what we're receiving and comment on it because I think it's, you know, we're going to have to at some point come to some discussion on how to manage those resources because they are very informative in many cases and uh, they do uh, guide and inform our work. And we also want to acknowledge which we're doing the receipt of these mess these, uh, this input. And so some discussion on how to manage that going forward. I only see that increasing. So um, we wanna thank people for, for doing that as well. Just want to quickly re review, and this this may not take the full time allotted to it, but uh, a question regarding our action review process for the January forums, and then our gift certificate proposal, which is part of the packet, which I'd also like to have the group uh, discuss at some length. Upcoming events, next meeting uh, dates, and uh, other topics that have not uh, come to the table before uh, 48 hours in advance of this meeting and then we'll adjourn. So again, welcome everyone and thank you for your participation in this work for the town. Uh, like to move quickly to the approval of the minutes and did both sets of minutes get into the packet? No, that's, they did not. Okay, I was wondering if I missed something. That's that's all. No, but the, we do have those the, minutes took a minute, a little bit to go through, and we're still buried in COVID. Yes, and I understand. In our the the, you know, one of our meetings lasted quite a bit of time, and so there's a lot of uh, ground to cover in that. So I can understand how that took some time. But thank you for putting the minutes together for the the uh, the twenty eighth. So let's, let's go into that, let's review those and um, see if folks have any, uh, any comments, corrections, et cetera. Let's see, let me get my... Uh, I didn't get a chance to uh, read it to tell you all the truth. I didn't either. Yeah, no. I can't imagine that anybody did necessarily. So can we um, put it for like next week so we can- We can. Both, both we can. next week? Yep. We I can. will try to have all three, but- Okay. That'll be great. Okay. If we're all in agreement, we'll, we'll, we'll do that because it is important to go uh, through those at some point um, to be sure we're, we're all on target and, and on the same page. 
So um, let's move that to the next meeting, uh, please, Ms. Moyston. We'll look at uh, January 28th, the, uh, February 3rd, and today's meeting as well, if we can get all of those in, in place. And again, thanks for the, uh, the submission of the 28th uh, meeting minutes. I'd like to move now to um, the uh, public comment. And let's see, let me open up here. And I'd like to welcome uh, comments from the from the community at this time. So please uh, I'll speak up if you're so inclined, and Ms. Moyston will recognize you. And Ms. Moyston, you let me know if there are any. Yep, there's two individuals in attendance, and neither of them have their hand raised at the moment. Okay, we'll wait. Wait a moment or two. Okay, nothing yet. Okay. Well, again, the thank you. And uh, we're going to move forward and go right to our first um, action and discussion item, which is about the 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 bid contract that went live recently, and. I would just like to say, I want to thank um, the group again who, from us who worked on that. Uh, again, I have to remind myself as I'm talking about it, there's a lot of different people working on different things, but I know uh, Russ was involved in that. I think uh, Ms. Pat, you were involved in that. And there was one other, <coughs> yeah, and there she is. Alicia. When I see a little hand raise, it's sitting right on your left eye. That's very cute. a good little fashion statement there. But anyway, uh, thank you all again for your work. And I don't know if at this point, uh, any of you would like to lead us uh, in the discussion and to see if we have any uh, input. I know you're meeting tomorrow as well, but uh, let's just dive into that and see, see where it needs to go for us. Thank you. Mr. Vernon Jones. Well, the first item I, I was hoping to be able to ask Mr. Delaney about this, and I don't know whether we need to talk to him directly or whether, Jennifer, this is something you could pass along. But my understanding is that normally when you have a bid opening, it's a public event and people attend and whoever has the lowest number uh, wins the bid unless there's some problem when they call references. But in our case, we've laid out some pretty detailed minimum requirements that I don't think are quickly evaluated, certainly not just at a glance. Uh, so my question is, can we open the references uh, in advance of the bid opening so we know ahead of time which who we think is meets the minimum requirements? Or can we be very clear that we are not going to announce who wins the bid uh, and it will not be the low bidder unless they actually meet the minimum requirements? It just seems like this is, needs to be quite different than a normal bid opening. Ms. Walker and, and, and Ms. Pat, I want to def defer to you before we go to the larger committee. So my understanding is that everybody gets to know the lowest bid on June 23rd. So. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Walker, you had your hand up. Um, yeah, I guess I don't have anything to add to that, but that I was also wondering the same thing. So I do have the understanding that the bid would close and we would see the lowest bid on the 23rd, but that we would have to contact references. 
And so I guess I would have the same question as Mr. Vernon Jones in that if we are allowed allowed to open references before the closing of the bid, I'm I'm not sure that's something we discussed before. Mm -hmm. Ms. Ferreira, did you have your hand up? Yeah. Ms. Ferreira and then Mr. Vernon Jones and then Ms. Pat. Yeah, I guess like for me, you know, being totally transparent, I'm not very familiar with the bid process. That wasn't anything I was ever involved in. So I'm not sure about how everything happened. Like what you were telling, talking about Mr. Vernon Jones about, you know, with the bid opening, then you just take the, the lowest bid and that's that. I mean, I would, I would think that this is going to be a lot more complicated. We got to be very, you know, careful about who we're going to be. You know, we got to check, you know, first make sure they meet the minimum requirements and then, you know, check those references to make sure we get someone that's actually going to be helpful as opposed to just, you know, get someone that then is going to be more work to manage than to actually get the work done. Um, so, you know, my thing would be, yeah, for it, it's going to take a little bit more time. So I don't know if, 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 but maybe that's something Delaney could let us know to kind of start checking references now before, you know, we really know who are the kind of folks that meet the minimums and stuff. Um, so is the minimum requirements, but the, let me rephrase that. Or the reference are part of the minimum requirements, which is part of the bid, correct? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So I will ask Mr. Delaney tomorrow. He might simply say that it needs to come to him in writing, which I can do on your behalf if you would like. Um, just because typically any questions in regards to a bid need to um, be in writing so that they can be transparent and available for the public. Uh, the only thing I want to add yes. is that uh, Ms. Ms. Anoni, Ms. Pat and then and Mr. Yep. Peter Jones. Oh, I think uh, Mr. Ross was uh, ahead of me. Go ahead, Mr. Ross. Well, um, Ms. Pat had volunteered to be uh, a member of our committee engaged with Mr. Delaney in evaluating the references. Uh, and uh, he indicated an openness to having two people do that. Um, and we never, I don't, think we officially agreed or appointed Ms. Pat. I think we should appoint Ms. Pat and see if somebody else wants to do that as well. Ms. Tashina also volunteered. Oh, great. Yeah, he did. Um, what did I volunteer for? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you volunteered to uh, take a look at references with uh, Ms. 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 Pat and uh, uh, Mr. Delaney. Do you remember last week? Oh, I, yeah. Yeah, last week. I, yeah, I, yeah, I remember. I thought it, I, I thought it, I also thought we were looking, I, sorry. I thought that I volunteered to go over the stuff with the, um, the responses or something from the Amherst Police Department. That's what I, for some reason, had in my head that I had I had volunteered for. But yeah, sure, I'll go over the references. That's fine. Well, I don't know that it's limited to the references. I believe it's right. the, oh, that's the, the, the bids in general. Yeah, that's fine. I, I mean, yeah, that's fine. I, I, yeah, I thought, I just thought I was, Yeah, I was inquiring about something else, but okay, yeah, sure. I have a comment, Wait, but I wanna make sure that I'm not overstepping someone else, Ms. Ferreira. Well, I guess I, I, I do have a question about that. So what are we asking Ms. Pat and Ms. Bowman to do? I thought it was references, so, but Ms. Bowman, so you said there's, there's something else too? What else are they gonna be doing? References, references. Yeah, it's references. Yeah, but we're Mr. also looking at the bids themselves. No. No, I thought Mr. Delaney was going to be doing that. Okay. I'm so confused. Yeah. It was references from what I remember from last week was that you all yeah. were going to be looking at references with him. Re you needed help with that. Yeah, written references. Yeah. I know a little bit a little bit about um bid. Um the opening date simply means when 
uh, prospective uh, bidders the day that it ends. I know the word is very confusing. So the opening date actually means the end of when people can actually submit. So the opening date, Tuesday, February 23rd, that's when it gets opened and the criteria for IFP, uh, B is price and of course references. So I like the, uh, I like the fact that um, Mr. Ross Vernon Jones had recommended that in addition to verbal reference that we should get written reference so that we, you know, it's fair when we're reviewing the references. I think the comment I was going to, to make is just uh, in, in support of what the subcommittee is talking about too, is that I, I believe the community service working group has to have uh, be a filter for a lot of the information that's, that's either coming in or going forward. Uh, we, we are a group that's responsible for making recommendations. We're gonna be responsible for following through with consultants and other people working on, on our behalf. So on the front end, I think it's important for us to be, certainly be looking at references because uh, the, the, that criteria was created by, by us. And so we, we have an, uh, sort of an uh, inside knowledge and track and feel for whether or not that criteria is being met. So I think that it's important that the folks who are gonna be working with Mr. Um, Mr. Delaney do have an opportunity to look at that. And so also, I, um, yeah, and so, no, sorry, also, but, go ahead. No, go right ahead. Um, so just so I have this straight in my own head, when the, when the bids start coming in, like me and Miss Pat, we're going to we're, we're basically verifying the ref, re, the references. No, can I can I clarify? Miss like, oh. Pat, please. So basically, all bids will be sealed in an envelope, either mailed or dropped off at the town hall. So Mr. Delaney will collect all the bids. Uh, we'll collect we'll collect bids as they come in. And then um, on the 23rd, it's opened. I will imagine because we also want, you know, the references to be really good. If the lowest bid doesn't have good reference, it's something our group may want to discuss. Do we want to go to the next lowest bid? I don't know. But um, Ms. Tashina, it's not coming to us directly. It will go to the town hall. And uh, the requirement is that the document has to be hard copy to be submitted. So it will go to, uh, to the town hall and then Mr. Delaney will contact us for references at some point. But that's what I'm not understanding. Like when, whenever those references are happening, what are we doing with them? Like we clearly have, somebody has to clearly figure out whether or not those references are accurate. So is that what we're doing? We're figuring out whether those references are accurate? He, they're going to be pro, uh, providing us with written references. And uh, Mr. Delaney will be reaching out to us to review those um, references, I will imagine. But what are we doing to review them? Are we just looking at them and seeing if they have the if they match up with our qualifications, or are we verifying that those references are accurate? Uh, are you perhaps we can get an answer, uh, a, a, a thorough. I'll come back to you, Miss Pat. There are several people that had their hands up before you started speaking, Mr. Vernon Jones and Miss Ferreira. Well, I don't think we should spend too long on this without Mr. Delaney. I think some of this we need to get from him. But we wrote very explicit minimum requirements. We said the references uh, or the bid needed to give evidence of an understanding of racism, uh, an understanding of the history of the impact of policing on BIPOC communities, uh, the ability to uh, work with a community group um, so we laid out a whole lot of things 
And the first question is, does, does what they submit give evidence that they meet those requirements? Then the question of whether they're valid and true is, is you know, verifying them as a separate process. But the first question is, if true, do they meet our requirements? And Mr. Delaney asked for our help doing that because he said, you know, he's not an expert around uh, mm. racism or, or policing either one. Ms. Ferreira? Yeah, that, you know, just to kind of add to what Mr. Vernon Jones said, yeah, that's exactly, um, you know, my understanding too, is first to kind of do that, you know, to look at the reference chat since we, we, we said it was written, right, to see whether they have all those some, those areas, right, similar projects with a, a job description, summary of the process and outcomes, you know, all of those things, like making sure that we're verifying that. And then the only thing that I'm a little bit confused about, because again, the whole bid thing, but it, but then I'm assuming, let's say, if we do have the lowest bidder, they have the references and their references have everything we want, then for me, the next level would be, though, to still call the references. I don't yep. think we want to just rely on those written right. references. Now, before we do the, the, you know, the kind of, okay, now what, what, this is who we're going with because they have the lowest bid and they have everything we, we, we requested in the minimum requirements is to then call them. And that's where you all can be helpful too, Ms. Pat and Ms. Bowman is to make the call. So that yeah, right. that's that's literally I think, what I was I think asking. One of the, I'm sorry, Ms. Ms. Bowman, go ahead. I was, that's literally what I was asking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think the, the importance of that follow-up call also gets to some deeper understanding of what the written piece was speaking to. Sometimes people in a written recommendation will say certain things. They'll say something uh, slightly or maybe more or or much differently or put more emphasis on something in a phone call because it's a more inter, interpersonal kind of communication that'll be you know revealing in either very positive or, or or not too positive light so i think what you know just reinforcing what miss ferrera is saying and also the whole process of following up you know with the written you know written and let's just call it an interpersonal call to these folks to sort of narrow the, the field of, of what we're dealing with. You know, we wanna be sure we're as precise as possible when we're getting to somebody. So any other uh, final comments on that? And we can move forward. There's a, com a comment I wanna make about this. I wanna go back to Mr. Vernon Jones with something in a minute, Mr. Ms. Pat. Oh, I just wanted to add that my uh, thinking about um, verifying uh, references is actually when we make the phone call to have to have it as a phone conference. So have Mr. Delaney's, you know, be on the on the call and Ms. Tashina when when we're verifying. So that three people, you know, uh, we make our notes and then compare notes. That way, you know, we're doing it very fairly. That's all I want to add. Mr. Vernon Jones. Well, I. I wasn't sure where you were skipping moving in the agenda. I have some comments that are really about the phase two bid. You're pretty adept at, at making segues, Mr. Vernon Jones. So maybe, <laughs> maybe this is this is that was my cue, maybe. <laughs> but I did I did want to the, the the piece I wanted to say at the end was that I want to go back to what Ms. Moyston said about, you know, Ms. Moyston, your willingness to communicate with Mr. Uh, Mr. Delaney uh, about this and to, to confirm our need to uh, connect very solidly with him, you know, going forward, you know, my words, but uh, thank you for that. And, um, you know, we appreciate it. So Mr. Vernon Jones. Well, first, I, I think you, you alluded to it, but I wanted to make sure everybody on the working group knew that we have posted a subcommittee meeting uh, for tomorrow uh, what time? Seven o'clock. Seven, Seven. Yeah, uh, to which you're all welcome to attend. Although, uh, and our intention is to work on the text of the uh, bid for phase two. Um, and we also wanted to uh, invite you to, if you have suggestions, either at this meeting or in writing, uh, hopefully before tomorrow, uh, we'd love to have your input as to what you know, would go in the request for the phase two consultant. Um, now, 
partly related to that and partly separate from that, uh, I'm hoping that we can have some community members come in and be in dialogue with our group um, and that some of that might inform uh, some of what goes in that uh, bid request. Um, so I know we all met Barbara Love when she was on the uh, interview committee. Uh, and I know I have a sense that she has a, a vision and uh, of some of what our work might lead to uh, and has done a lot of thinking about this over time. So I was hoping that Barbara and you know, maybe Mary Custard uh, with a particular school experience. Um, and I'm, what I was hoping for was more than just public comment where we are committed to listening and not going back and forth, but a, a brief opportunity to go back and forth. Um, I got a rare opportunity to chat with uh, Dr. Love uh, this week and found out that she is available if we wanted to invite her to our meeting next week. Um, if we don't take her up on that, who knows when we'll get her. Um, and then at some point tonight, I'd also like to talk if we're, we're trying to think about moving this alternative services thing forward, that we probably ought to have a similar kind of discussion maybe with family outreach and CHD and maybe Brianna can identify some others. Um, that, uh, but we, I think it'd be helpful to be in dialogue and um, get the help from other people in the community. I, I am, uh, you know, aware of, of, of this suggestion and, and, and it's continuous from what your first comment was all about, uh, Russ, and I'll comment on it in a minute, but I'd like to um, hear others' responses to what Mr. Vernon Jones's uh, statements are. Ms. Pat? So I second what um, Mr. Ross said, and thank you for, you know, reaching out to Dr. Love. I will really, will hope that will be, you know, we'll have time next week for her to come in and talk to us. I also want to comment that when we first, you know, at the beginning of our group forming, we had made a list of community members and organizations that we would like to invite. I would like us to revisit that and maybe um, reach out to those people if they will be available to, to come talk to us. May not be next week, but um, I do agree that, you know, getting my input from the community to inform us as to the, uh, you know, recommending alternative services. So I second mm -hmm. inviting uh, community members and organizations. Ms. Moisten, I just want to ask, a, I'm sorry, Ms. Ms. Ferreira, I'll get to you in a second if you don't mind. Ms. Moisten, I want to be sure I'm, I'm not or I'm doing this correctly because there were a couple of times, and I apologize, Ms. Bowman, to you. There were a few times you had raised your hand in the previous meeting and I didn't see you. I don't want that to happen at this particular time. So, so sort of technically, if, if I go into the panelist list, is that where I would see? Well, you don't see, do you, do you see Tashina Bowman's name? I do. Do you see the yellow hand in the left-hand corner? No. See a green hand next to her hand, next to her name. Okay. I'm going to see if I can make you co host, and then maybe that'll help. Yeah, because just so you know, she has her hand up right now. That's what I'm saying. And I, I, and I apologize, Ms. Bowman, because I, 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 everyone else is, is there, so I can see their hand. <laughs> Uh, it's, right? it's okay. I'm driving right now, so I'm there's that's why I'm off the camera. Oh, you raise your hand right now. Be careful. Do you do you see it now, Mr. Wiley? I um, it's a yellow hand that's like this, and, and it's, it's on the it's left in, hand side of her screen. Let me take a look again. Thank you. Okay, I see her screen and I see in her screen, I see the hand up now and it says lower hand. Yes, so that's her hand being raised and then Thank after you. she speaks, it can be lower. Okay. Thank you for your indulgence group. 
So where were we before I had that brain freeze? Um, let's see, Ms. Ferreira. Well, well, I, I defer to Ms. Bowman first, if he still has something. Yeah. And then I can go ahead. Yes, Ms. Bowman. Okay, so yes. um, what I was going to, um, what I was gonna say is that the, I, I do also agree um, about, um, what Mr. Vernon Jones is saying. Uh, Benji, 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 I'm on, uh, you gotta be careful for a second. You gotta, oh my gosh. Um, I'm gonna, I have to, I have to gather my thoughts. I'll, I will raise my hand again. Oh yeah, to go, go ahead. Okay, we'll, we'll be patient and, and wait for you, Ms. Ms. Coleman. Thank you. Tell Benji he has to raise his hand too. <laughs> Uh, so, Mr. Vernon Jones, we'll circle back to you. I'm sorry, Ms. Ferreira, go ahead, and then we'll circle back to Mr. Vernon Mr. Yeah, Jones. Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, I'm in agreement with, you know, bringing in some folks and talking with them, and also what Ms. Pat said, and, you know, to circle back, because that was actually on my kind of list of things to kind of touch base on if we had time around um, inviting groups, right? And how do we do that? Or when are we doing that? That sort of thing. But I guess my question is more so around what Mr. Vernon Jones said, I guess my thing is this. So what are we talking to, 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 to Dr. Love about and who else are we bringing in? I guess you said Ms. Custard. I guess what are we talking to them about? Because, right, we had the first bid that I thought the first bid was around the, the first charge, right? Make recommendations on alternative ways of providing public safety services to the community for that first report. And then the second bid, which is what you all are gonna be meeting about tomorrow is for the other one, right? Make recommendation on reforms to the current organizational oversight structures of the Amherst Police Department. So my, th my question is, what are we gonna be talking to them about? Are we talking to them about that since we are going into phase two? I guess no. I'm confused. I'm confused. No, for them to give us- uh, Ms. Pat, Ms. Pat, hang on please. There, I, I wanted, I, I have to go by hands because yeah. otherwise I'm gonna be cutting people off, I apologize. So, uh, so state your question again, just at the end again, Ms. Ferrell. Yeah, my, my question is, what are we bringing Dr. Love and, and, and um, Ms. Mary Custard in to talk to them about? You see what I'm okay. saying? I'm not clear on that. Uh, are we talking to them about part two of the bid? Are we just talking to them generally about alternatives for, you know? Because I guess I'm getting all muddled because I thought we were talking about bid, the bid, the second bid, and then we get, I guess we jumped into Dr. Love, so I'm confused. <laughs> okay, Ms. Pat, I'm sorry, go ahead. My, my understanding was when we were forming this group, um, we talked about reaching out to different groups. And then we had a public uh, forum and some of those people that we specifically um, suggested, I don't know if we did invite them or not, but I think that's my understanding of what Mr. Ross is trying to, to tell us, is that correct? Oh, yeah, what are, you, what are you saying, Mr. Russ? Yes, uh, Mr. Vernon Jones. Well, I mean, it's really two things. I think the, my sense is that part of our whole project is about how do we help dismantle white supremacy in Amherst? How do we make this a community which is more inclusive uh, and empowering of BIPOC folks? Uh, how do we make it so the police aren't favoring uh, white residents uh, over BIPOC? Um, and some of that is very clearly related to how we go about phase two, which is going to be uh, policies and procedures and citizen oversight. Um, so that's the direct connection. Um, but I, I thought of Dr. Love as someone who has thought about the whole racial situation in town and might inform our work from that perspective as well. Um, and we haven't um, done much or heard much explicitly about the connection between the police and the schools and uh, serving, uh, particularly how we serve young people with safety services in this town. And I know that was a major interest on many people's part. So that was what made me think of Mary Custer. There may be someone else who uh, could do that as well or better, but uh, I thought Mary would be good. Um, so I thought that one, it would 
help guide our work generally, uh, but that it might act be very specifically lead us to include some things in the second phase of the bid uh, in terms of what we wanted, how we wanted to get help from the consultant. Thank you, Ms. Bowman. Okay, so I remember what I was gonna ask now. Um, so as part of thinking about all of this stuff and like Mr. Vernon Jones brought up, can you stop please? Mr. Vernon Jones brought up um, what organizations were we gonna contact in order you know, to have them to like get them out there and doing um, outreach with, you know, stop, please, with people who, you know, like instead of having the police go out, there's a couple things. One thing I think that we need to talk about which organizations that we are going to contact, because I can say for, I can say from experience that there's one organization that's very popular to be contacted that we should not be contacting. They're not, they're really not a good organization. They don't have enough resources. The other thing is that, and we, I mean, I, we could probably talk about that later. The other thing is I just wanted to put out there that I believe it was Denver has already implemented this in within like a week ago. And so we should be watching what they're doing out there because they're so far so good. Like they're saying that it's working really well. So we should definitely be having our eyes on them if we're gonna actually try to impl imp implement this kind of um, service for people. So that's all I had to say. Uh, thank you, Ms. Moment. I, I have, a, I have a, a comment, but I want to defer to the group before I go. <clears throat> Ms. Ferreira. Yeah, I guess, um, yeah, for me, you know, of course, you know, I, I think uh, Dr. Love and Ms. Custer, you know, have a level of expertise that obviously we want to tap and want to hear from. But I guess I just want to make sure that we utilize their time wisely. We have questions. We're going to really be able to engage because I guess, you know, that's why I was feeling a little bit frazzled about it. You see, I do want them to come in and talk, but I don't want it to be a wasted opportunity, you know? So I think we, not, we need to be clear about what we're talking to them about, what the questions are going to be about so that it's not all over the place. And then we're just getting information, you know? Mm -hmm. I want it to be targeted. I want it to be focused. I want it to be narrowed. And, and you know, I want to get some key information if we do indeed bring them in. Understood. Miss Ms. Pat. So my thinking is um, that we should invite those folks that we identified and organizations for them to come and do a brief, a, uh, a brief presentation to us, like the Women League Voters, for example, and other organizations in, a, in, a, in addition to our individuals that we identify for them to share with us what is in, in their mind. And then perhaps may, we may have um, uh, questions for them, but I don't want us to limit them to our own question. Let them come in and share with us um, what they want to. If I may, that that's, I believe, Ms. Pat, in the, in the spirit, and I'll come to you, Ms. Walker, I see your hand. It, there, there's, um, in, in the spirit of what's being proposed by, by Mr. Vernon Jones and, and others here, that, that begs a dialogue between people who are well-versed in this community and also who are well-versed in the field of social justice and uh, uh, racial equity and you know, on and on and on. So I think there's a, there's a reason to do this uh, sooner than later, certainly. But also I wanna go back to very early in, in the start of this group to remind us that we did have a list of, of groups and even some individuals that we wanted, we said we wanted to talk to when we got to the community outreach stages of our work. And we're, we're coming to that very rapidly. We're, we're doing a lot of work um, with the police department. There's going to be uh, in combination with what, what um, Mr. Bockelman is doing with respect to getting additional data um, I was advised to go forward and uh, send uh, another request uh, to the police department uh, to see if we can close the gap in all this information that we need. But where we're, 
where we're trying to launch some effort right now is with the community. And, you know, we're, we're seeing it in the, in, in the communities responding, by the way, and this is a little down for the down the next item actually on the agenda, but they're responding in terms of giving us resources, they're giving us input, they're giving us their thoughts and, and um, their, their ideas and their critiques and whatever. And so we have to look at that more carefully. I do think that, it, you know, for somebody, and I go back to Mr. Vernon Jones and Ms. Ferreira and probably others here who, you know, know Miss uh, know uh, Dr. Barbara Love very well, and know Miss um, uh, Miss Mary Custard very well. They're they're, they're not only longstanding members of the community, but they have a they're very grounded in information. So these are also the folks we want to tap into going forward. I want to resonate my my question, uh, join Miss Ferreira in the question of like. Um, Barbara Love, Dr. Barbara Love and Ms. Mary Cusser notwithstanding, are there other people who fall into that same realm that can help us? And do we not we be careful about not picking some over others? Um, but at the same time, what are the guiding questions that are we gonna to propose to these folks that are gonna inform our work um, in a way that's gonna be useful? So I'm, I'm all for certainly uh, uh, Dr. Love and certainly uh, um, Ms. Custard. I, I know them both and their, their knowledge is deep and uh, about these particular topics. So that's fine with me. I do want us to be organized and Ms. Ferreira said about what's going forward. Uh, narrow the, 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 the field of questions to those kinds of things that that inform our work and, and launch us into the next phase of community organ, you know, community outreach. So just my thoughts, Mr. Vernon Jones. Oh, I was Ms. Walker, did you have your hand up? Uh, yeah, thank you. I was Go just going to um, just agree with what everybody else is saying that I think it would be a good idea to reach out to groups and allow people to come in. I do though like the idea of allowing groups to present to us because I think a lot of these groups are already involved in this sort of thing and they have been working on these things for maybe even longer than we have and they probably already have some ideas of what they would like to see in terms of alternative services or what they would like to see in terms of police reform and their ideas are based off of the data that they already have from this town. So I think allowing them to come and show us what they have or what they're thinking is beneficial for us. Um, but then I do also agree with Deborah. like we also might know what kind of information we want from certain groups. And I think it would be really important to help guide that with certain questions that we have ahead of time so that we can make sure we follow up with those questions if we set it up in a way that that can happen. Um, but I also wouldn't be opposed to inviting Dr. Love to come next week. I think that's a great idea. I think we're a little bit unprepared for that. But I think if she doesn't have any other time coming up in the near future and she has stuff that she wants to share with us, then I wouldn't be opposed to that. Appreciate that comment. And I want to resonate what Mr. Vernon Jones said. And then I see your hand, Mr. Vernon Jones. But uh, maybe this is a little prejudice on my part, but I'm just going to go there. If you had a chance to, to have Dr. Love talk to you next week, it's a good idea to take advantage of that <laughs> because the schedule is heavy. Let me just put it that way. Yeah. <laughs> Leave it at that. Mr. Vernon Jones? Well, I'm just agreeing with the things other people have said. I think we could invite you know, people to make a presentation to us. I think a few of us could get together you know, or correspond over the over this coming week and come up with a few questions that, uh, you know, so we've given it some thought. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think each of us may have our own questions. Uh, once we, you know, I don't think we all need to only do questions we all agree on, but it would be useful for a few of us to, to do some thinking together uh, between now and next week. Um, as far as, you know, who are all the people we're going to invite? You know, I, I think we need to get started and, you know, kind of invite the, the people we think will be most useful to us. And um, we, we may not invite everybody who would be good, you know, I mean, we have finite time. 
uh, but the, the others could come for a public comment if they want to. Mm -hmm. um, I want to um, sort of jump in and, and go to, to you, Ms. Owen. Oh, and I, I know you're, you're listening very carefully there, and um, I don't want to put you on the spot, but I, I know you've got a lot of um, investment in working with community groups, not only in your profession, but in your, your personal life. And you know, I haven't heard from you yet, but I wanted to see if you had any thoughts before we, you know, move forward with some suggestions on how we might take our next steps in addition to what we've said. Definitely. So while um, first of all, I want to say I agree with everyone, and I do agree with guiding, making questions to give to people as they come and present to us. But one thing I want to be transparent about with the group, especially with groups that work with children and families, specifically BIPOC families, um, there's not a lot of resources out in this area that support specifically BIPOC families. And a lot of programs like CHD, 18 Degrees, um, I can think of a lot of other ones. They're mostly ran by white people. So I just want the group to be aware of that and be aware that just because they are experts in child advocacy, doesn't mean they all see the intersectionality in the child welfare system. So I wanted to be mm. transparent about that. Thank you. So I, I think within that discussion, um, we can kind of move on, but I, 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 hear, us, I hear some general agreement about a couple of things. One, um, to uh, consider inviting uh, Dr. Love to be a part of our meeting um, next Wednesday. It seems that we're gonna try to schedule our meeting next Wednesday on the 17th and possibly, and this is kind of to, to Mr. Vernon Jones, um, Ms. Custard, um, I don't know those two. I, I haven't talked with Mary, I don't know. That's what I want to say. I want to, I'm being very careful about this invitation, but let's let's start with with uh, Dr. Love, and then getting back to what Ms. Ferreira was saying, and there was some agreement with that. That we uh, understand that we we have a responsibility to create some uh, some guiding questions for that conversation, in addition to leaving room for her certainly to offer her. Um, her own interpretations and her own guidance in, in that area because of her level of expertise. Am I correct in, in that? And that we would get those, uh, those, those kinds of questions we're, we're proposing to Ms. Moyston and that maybe back to a subgroup. I'm not sure who would, I, I don't wanna get lost in the, field, in the field of people here, but that we, we have those questions collated and ready to go when we have this meeting with, uh, uh, you know, Dr. Love. So my, let me just offer a suggestion that, you know, uh, Mr. Vernon Jones, if you're willing to do this, that we send our, our, our guiding questions and thoughts to Ms. Moyston. And then Ms. Moyston, maybe you can pass those on to Mr. Vernon Jones and maybe even the folks who are working with them on the, uh, the bid process. And uh, leave it to them to work through that and clean it up and have a set of questions ready for us to discuss with Mr. Uh, with Dr. Love on next Wednesday. Does that sound feasible, Mr. Vernon Jones? That that all sounds workable to me. I thought I heard Deborah say at one point that we might want to send questions in advance um, for Dr. Love or anybody else to be thinking about. So if we if we can. You know, I can put things together. We won't, I don't see a process where we can easily sort of achieve consensus, uh, but I'd be happy to, to put things together and forward them to Dr. Love, you know, hopefully a day in advance anyway. Mm -hmm. Is that correct, Ms. Ferreira? And then I'll go to Ms. Pat. Yeah, that would be good. Mm -hmm. Okay, Ms. Pat. So I just want to um, validate and agree with what Ms. Owen said about uh, organizations that are led mostly by white folks. However, if some of those organizations work with some marginalized uh, population like homeless folks, then perhaps we might consider inviting them, survival center. Um, one of the organizations that I am very, I would very much up to think about is the Human Rights Commission. 
um, for them to uh, come in and talk to us about their role. And I just feel that it's a very good um, organization. However, they don't have the power to enforce anything. And so it's one of the things I'm looking at when I'm making recommendation for alternative services, because it would be nice to have an organization that can actually um, implement um, violations for, uh, for lack of better word to use. I mean, they do a great job that it, to me, it's not enough. I've had personal experience, you know, dealing with that and the outcome wasn't that great because they mean well, many, many years ago, like 20 something years ago um, of a, a child that was attending summer school. And um, I think that, you know, the Human Rights Commission should be given more power if they really want them to be effective, is my point. And also I was thinking about um, Ms. Gwelling in town that deals with um, uh, people that have housing issues. Uh, yeah. Insecure. yeah. I would very really much like her to, you know, come present to us and talk to us. I'll just stop. Yeah. Ms. Moisten. So I'm the staff liaison or human rights coordinator. And so what the Human Rights Commission, none of the, all of the boards and committees have the ability to recommend. None of them really have the power to change anything. Mm -hmm. But typically the town will use the recommendations that are put forward through the committees and boards, or sometimes they do. The Human Rights Commission has run into some difficulties over different um, things because what you end up is, you know, you don't want to go to the Human Rights Commission with the complaint because you have to do that through open meeting. And that, and so it causes some conflict. So we had to take like the complaint process out and kind of restructure what the Human Rights Commission was going to do based off of the charge that was made in town meeting. But I do highly suggest that this group connect with all of the grassroots and town and state organizations that are all working for social justice, right? So there's the core equity team where I'm the co-chair there. Even the chamber has created an equity court, an equity task force from the chair there. Um, the Human Rights Commission, uh, what is it, race, what's the, the Shabazz, so the Shabazz is, yeah. is and the equity task force, so forth and so forth, defund 413. So because all of us have the same common goal and it just seems like it would be helpful for us all to be working together because we all have different branches of, in, of the entire mission, I guess yeah. you could say. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Ms. Pereira. Thank you. Yeah, I agree with that too. Um, the only thing is, is just I just want to remind what we had said like several weeks ago when we initially started meeting is that with the organization list that we put out and I guess we should probably just add to that list and kind of prioritize which ones we're going to be bringing in first for presentation. But we did say we were going to, we wanted to uh, listen to BIPOC um, led organizations first and, and then the other organizations afterwards. So I just wanted to make that reminder so that when we're putting together our list and and and, um, and scheduling, which I think should be what we probably should discuss, right, Paul, how to kind of move forward with that, um, that we keep that in mind. Well, this would be in keeping, and then I'll go to Ms. Moisten and then Mr. Pereira, and then uh, Mr. Vernon Jones. Um, the uh, This would be in keeping with the process uh, we had at the during the community forums where we were we were uh, featuring our BIPOC community members first in the conversation. So once again, if we're outreaching to, to BIPOC um, run or supported agencies, those would be in the upper tier of our, our list. And so there's probably a good reason, certainly Ms. Ferrer, to go back and take a look at them and say, who are we going to, to target um, as, as a, a a sort of a first salvo out there to to make sure we we get that information and again that's that gets back to your point what are we asking people we just don't want this to be a random kind of conversation 
but we, we want to ask questions that are going to have give us some essential, meaningful input that's going to guide us in a way to make recommendations that are going to be uh, doable and achievable and you know worth fighting for, if you will. I, I don't think we want to make empty recommendations. So if we don't have that kind of background, then, then we, we won't. Ms. Moyston, uh, please, and then uh, Mr. Uh, Ben Jones. So I am creating a copy of the list that I have so far, and I'm just gonna remove the individuals off of it, only because again, um, once I send it to you all, then it becomes public record and we just don't want to involve, and then you guys can rate them or put them in whatever order that you would like to or add to it and then give it back and then we can move from there with it. So I'm getting ready to do that now. Okay. Thank you. Uh, did you have your hand raised? Well, that's just a thumbs up. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thumbs up are always encouraging at, at 6.30 at night for me. I mean, I just, you know. <laughs> Mr. Martin Jones, <laughs> go ahead. Keep me awake, Mr. Right. Rare. Mr. Martin Jones. Uh, well, I've been thinking we're, you know, we're only about five weeks from when we need to have at least the outline of a proposal about how we think alternative services should be dealt with. And as I understood Mr. Bachman at our last meeting, uh, he's thinking that these two police positions that were held have, have money in them that could be spent before the next budget year begins. So that as early as spring, we might be trying to do something. And, you know, our primary concern may be how uh, BIPOC folks are interacted with, but the truth of the matter is if we set something up that's going to deal with homelessness and substance abuse and, um, uh, you know, what, whatever else, um, it's going to deal with people of all races. Right. And I don't think, I don't have a very good picture of what that situation looks like in town and mm -hmm. who the police are encountering and what kind of problems they have and uh, where they get sent. Um, so I'm interested in hearing from some of the social service agencies, regardless of whether they're agencies that we would ever contract with or not. You know, we might not ever, I mean, I'm not sure we want, I mean, that's another discussion I think we need to have soon about do we yeah. think we're gonna contract this service or do we think we're gonna create a new uh, division within the town government? Uh, I think that's an important discussion to have pretty soon, but I'd like to get a better picture of what, what are the police, you know, running into? What are the calls they get? And I don't want to hear that just from the police. I want to hear it from some of the social service people, whether they're people we would want to engage with or not. I wanted their picture of what the, the needs are out there. So, uh, let me see if I understand. I, I think I understand, certainly, but I'm just trying to put this in some kind of visual order in my, my own mind, that we're talking about BIPOC communities, but we're also talking about agencies that interact with the police department, either on behalf of or with BIPOC community members. Well, or the interact with the it's sort of like the, the people that the police are currently interacting with. Right. That we think that we think we want non-police to interact with. You know, what uh -huh. Uh -huh. what does that population look like? What are the needs? What are the services? Mm -hmm. That kind of thing. Okay. Other comments, Ms. Pat. Yes. Um I just want to add that uh, we should not um ignore Chamber of Commerce. Um that entity has so much influence and power in this town mm -hmm. and to university, to the town council, name it all. They, some of the business owners call the police all the time on people. So it would be good to have the chamber board or the president or whoever, or the director, executive director to come and talk to us, the challenges, quote unquote, mm -hmm. the challenges. Yep. The, um, experience of homeless people or whatever, or people with uh, mm -hmm. behavioral issues. 
Okay. Because that's what you're going to get. When, when, when we invite them, they're going to tell us problems they're having in downtown Amherst. Okay. Ms. Moyston. I just wanted to add the bid, the business improvement district, because they s deal with specifically the downtown area and the local businesses. Yes. So that would be Gabrielle Gould yep. and um, Claudia. Yep. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so all that makes sense, and I, I, I think I'm trying to summarize where we are right now. I think it's important, you know, for us to sort of keep track of this. Let me just go back a little bit. One, we're going to be getting uh, questions that we think are pertinent and essential for our conversation with uh, with Dr. Love to um, Mr. Vernon Jones, through Ms. Moyston. By, by when, Mr. Vernon Jones? ASAP, or you said at least a day before? Um, so Monday night? <laughs> um, let me just, I'm so, go ahead, Ms. Moyston. I'm sorry, Monday's a holiday. Oh. So you will also need to post the agenda. I will need to post that on Friday. That's President's Day. Yeah, I mean, that doesn't mean that you can't send me stuff and I forward it, but you know, it. just saying, it's a Monday. You need a day off. Can, can <laughs> Pretty we, much. Can we, can we ask President Biden if he minds if we just do some <laughs> business on that day for crying out loud? Okay, so we have to get the agenda stuff to you by Friday? Yes. Thank you. Mr. Vernon Jones. In terms of the questions, I don't think we've I, as long as we don't go back and forth, I don't think we yeah. violate the open meeting law if people CC me when they send the questions to Ms. Moyston. Uh, you don't. And if, as long as I get them by Monday night, uh, I'll have time to, you know, do a little uh, putting together and communicating with Dr. Love. Uh, and then we don't need to ask Ms. Moyston to engage with them over the weekend or the holiday. Ms. Moyston. Yep, I just wanted to chime in real there quick and just say, I don't mind doing that over the weekend and stuff, but if you guys could send stuff to me before nine o'clock, if you want it sent to the group that night, because if you send me something on a Sunday night at 10 o'clock, I, I, I can't guarantee it's gonna get sent anywhere. Don't. Until the following don't. day. <laughs> so I just put a little disclaimer out there. I have a, a prescriptive message you can send to people who send you an email at 10 o'clock on Sunday night. Hmm. I could Sounds be happy like to me. send it to you. <laughs> Sounds like me. <laughs> I'm a night woman. Thank you. So we're agreed we're going to do that. Okay, what what, what Mr. Vernon Jones said, just, just get that to, to him. In so that. wait, so that's what I needed clarity, Mr. Wiley. So it's just, we can send questions to Ms. Moyson with a CC to Mr. Vernon Jones by Monday night. Or Is vice that... versa. Well, what do you mean vice versa? Come to Russ. I'll just send it straight to, to Mr. Vernon oh, Jones. No, 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 no. Ms. Moyston. Ms. Moyston, okay, I, I got it back with Ms. Moyston and, and Mr. Vernon Jones, yeah. Okay, with well, a CC with, to Mr. Vernon Jones. Yeah. Okay, got it. Okay. And then the other piece before we go too further is that we're, that's, that's for our next meeting. Now we're talking too about meeting with groups mm -hmm. and individuals. So Ms. Moyston. I'm so sorry. I just want to chime in there too that I, as from the core equity team here in town, I've been working with, um, apparently Hadley has its own core equity team now and um, Belchertown mm -hmm. is working on one. And I'm going to hit the individuals up in South Deerfield that I know the and um, the administrators administrators in South Deerfield and Sunderland to see if they can't get one going, because I just feel like we it's kind of like the whole plastic bag ban like we have a plastic bag ban in Amherst, but if you go to Stop and Shop in Hadley you're going to get a plastic bag right and so I just there's some level of it, at least from the core equity team perspective where it needs to be more regionalized or more you know, all the towns be somewhat on the same input, but most of those programs are run by people who are not from the BIPOC community. So that's my my piece oh, there, but okay. they're allies. So I just thought you should be aware. Okay. Thank you. Very important. 
but I'm just trying to get to also, thank you for that information, but our understanding is that you're, you're going to work on revising a, a list of people now, uh, Ms. Moyston, that would include BIPOC individuals. We're trying to prioritize them and- It's, uh, it's not individuals because not I don't want to do that. individuals, no, organizations. It's, it's organizations and um, whatever I've been given from everyone is who's on there plus what I know is out there. Um, and then you guys can add or do whatever, just send it back to me so I, we all have the same. Okay. Um, let's see. Hang on a second. I'm going to have to leave. Can I leave the screen for a moment, Ms. 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 Owen? Would you um, mind taking over? You're on mute. You're on mute. Sorry, I was just wondering where we were on the agenda. I'll, I'll, we're, we're at, um, we're, we kind of went from phase two. We're talking a little bit about, I guess we kind of got into with the discussion about uh, uh, Dr. Love, we kind of moved slightly into this input from community members. So we're kind of in that, that, that realm. Okay. I'm sorry, I have to just check out for a second. I'll be right back. No problem. So is there any more input for the questions about Dr. Love or did you guys want to move on to the um, community input? You, you mean the public forum? Oh. Uh, I think that's what it is. No? I thought the next, oh. Yeah, the next one you were saying was the recent input from community members, that yeah. one? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. We can go into that, I think. I think yeah. that the next one. Oh, I, well, I guess just to finish off, though, the IFB phase two. So you all are going to get something to us, though, the group that's working on it, like um, by like the day before the meeting or something. I, I guess I'm unclear with that. Miss Pat? Before we leave. Off. So, so Miss Ferrara, we're meeting, our subgroup is meeting tomorrow. Mm -hmm. at 7 p.m. If yeah. any of you have any suggestion for us, we we'll encourage you to send it to Ms. Moiston so that she can forward it to us. No, 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 I get that. I was just saying in terms of once you all have met and like, cause like before you guys would send it to us at least the day before the meeting so that we have enough time to kind of read it. That's all I was trying to get clarity on. I mean, we, we have a draft that it, it, not all, all of us have, you know, um, contributed to it. So it's not quite ready for you guys to review. Yeah, no, no, I get that. That's why I was just saying if, if it was just going to come like maybe like, I don't know, by the 16th or something, you know? Like next, what yeah. do you think, um, Ms. Alicia and Mr. Ross? I would hope that um, after our meeting tomorrow, if it's not ready, that it would be ready shortly thereafter. Um, because we were able to sort of just compare all of our notes together and we shared, uh, so one of us had our screen shared, so we just made live edits last time. Mm -hmm. And I think we would probably do a similar thing this time. And if not ready the day after, maybe one additional day. Okay. Yep. So by Saturday, is that realistic for us? Let's say that will be our goal. Okay. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Thank you all, I'm sorry. I'm back, hi, Ms. Owen. <laughs> I'm back. Okay. So where, where do we end up, Ms. Owen, right now? Um, on the comment from the community input, I think it was. On the what? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Um, it was the next topic after the IFB on the um, feedback we've been hearing from the community. Okay. So um, if I may just, just launch into this, I want to you know, state the obvious. We've been getting lots of input either by email 
um, mostly by email, certainly, but uh, I sometimes get calls my, myself from people. And uh, folks in the community are becoming more interested in supporting our work. They're sending us resources. They're sending us questions. They're in, involved in looking at safety issues relative to the police department. And I also want to acknowledge internally, we are also generating lots of resources, not, not the least was, which was mentioned earlier about, uh, where was it? Um, what city was, I lost this, the city there. Um, Denver. What's that? Denver. Denver. Denver, yeah, for Denver. example. And there are other cities like that that are doing things and implementing things that are working. So a couple of points I want to make. One is that when these comments, uh, when these, these contributions come in, as the uh, working group has asked and I've been doing, I'll, I'll respond to folks and uh, let them know, acknowledge that we've received it and that in, and try to let them know that in some ways this information informs our work. Certainly it broadens our, uh, our field of knowledge and we, we do our best to, to read and absorb this uh, information. And uh, what I like to think about is outside of just responding, how to really incorporate some of these things which seem very pertinent and important and essential for us into our conversations and into our work so that uh, people truly know they're being heard. Uh, for example, we received a letter uh, recently from uh, a citizen in our community who is very much interested in the bid process and how it works and, and how, it, how it's choreographed. And or was asking questions about the, uh, the money itself and how it's managed and how it impacts the work of uh, not only the consultant, but the community. And I think yeah, a fuller conversation around those things would be better held if we had, uh, you know, certainly Mr. Delaney here and, um, and Mr. Bockelman. But uh, I just want to let folks know that we're, we're, we're getting a lot and you're hearing a lot too. So how do we bring this into the fold and how do we acknowledge and use it to to our best advantage. This is an open question. And Mr. Vernon Jones. Yeah, I, I don't have an answer to your larger question, but I wanted to appreciate your drafting the letter to DW. Um, but I also, the, as I look back at it, it seemed like two of the questions from DW were really very specifically about the bid. Right. Uh, and I think she may be at a potential bidder so I think it's important to respond immediately. And I think the only response we can make is you must contact Anthony Delaney uh, to get the particulars about the bid. Mm -hmm. uh, anything else we about her question two and three, anything else we say is maybe a violation of the bid process. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to suggest that we get that answer to her very quickly about items two and three, even if we're not ready to say anything more about item one yet in her letter, mm -hmm. in their letter. I certainly appreciate that, that comment because, and I guess uh, I assumed wrongly that uh, because we were talking about the bid process that Mr. Delaney uh, would, would be on, on this meeting with us. Um, should have taken responsibility to make that clearer, but apparently he's not available anyway. But uh, I think that that is an appropriate r response um, so, and if the group would like and is asking me to do so, I'd be happy to follow that, that up with, an, with a, an additional comment relative to what we're talking about right now, because I think it makes perfect sense, Mr. Vernon Jones. Other comments? <coughs> um, Ms. Moiston? I just want to make sure that everybody's very aware that you can't answer any questions in regards to the bid at all. Like, 
they all have to be routed to Anthony. Right, and I, thank you. And I, I think, I guess what I was saying too, I would mention that, you know, as based on what our conversation is, we don't want to get into anything like that, that for the potential bidder or negotiating anything for the town through a subgroup, through a committee working group like ours. So definitely, thank you. And, um, we do have, and I just want to say, we have lots of resources. And uh, if you're like me, every once in a while I see something, I say, oh my God, this is great. You know, we can do this. This would help us, whatever. And as soon as I do that, I get another one. That's just as good, if not better. So I think at some point, not today, I, and I'd welcome suggestions from folks on how we want to manage our resource bank, um, you know, so that we can actually go to it. And Ms. Moyston, you know, I think you mentioned this a while ago, but it, it could be a monumental task. What do we filter in? What do we filter out? Those kinds of things, because we don't want to get inundated with every piece of information that comes into us about um, the, the police or safety or homeless or, you know, you name it. it. It's going to come to us at this point because a lot of the issues that we're dealing with are overlapping into other areas for sure. So, any comments? I miss Miss Pat. Yes. So one of the things I would like us to consider is uh, some of the resources that we've been getting. I think I can speak for myself. Sometimes when I talk to my very, some of my very liberal white friends about um, racism in this town with the police. And sometimes I get the answer, oh, but we're lucky, you know, they don't get shot. You know, I miss this pretty much safer. And there are some um, police, I miss police interaction with some residents in this town that were actually on YouTube that um, residents sent to us. If we can collect some of those when um, the chair and the vice present alternative recommendation in April, it would be good for you know to play some of the clips because we still have people who are in denial in this town. Very good people uh, with good intention, but it's really good to to see evidence. You know, I'm I'm really would like us to consider that to to present some of the uh, YouTube um, clips of what BIPOC uh, some you know that experience in this town. That's what I want to put out there. Mm -hmm. Because one of the ones I saw was really, um, the reaction to me was like very intense. I have, you know, when I used to run um, my restaurant, I've had, you know, my neighbors call and said back to this, you know, nice complaint just, just for playing African music in my restaurant. And I politely tell them like, this is not going to change you know, that my restaurant is a cultural destination and part of it is music, is the food, is the arts and craft that I sell there and, you know, some clothing. It's not going to change. So I, I think folks are still in denial in this town that, you know, it's not too bad. This is the point mm -hmm. I'm trying to make. And sort of circling back, and thank you for that, Ms. Pat. I think those are important comments. And uh, if I may, Ms. Ferrer, I'm going to you a second. I'm just sort of circling back to a, a comment uh, made by Mr. Vernon Jones earlier, uh, you know, referencing conversations, for example, with folks like uh, Dr. Love and other people who we may bring in or organizations we bring in that might be informing some and framing some of our recommendations going forward. Comments like yours, Ms. Pat, are, are, are helping us to frame some of those recommendations going forward. So we don't wanna lose those, um, those comments and experiences. And I, I think that's why we're going out to the community. That's why we're going out to, to, do, uh, to gather information. At some point, I, I just wanna say that at some point, we're gonna find that 
many of these experiences and categories fall into some, some pretty unique and distinct buckets because there's so many that are similar and we'll, we'll know what to do with that when we, we see them uh, and how to, how to make recommendations based on that. So that just saying, just really important. I thank you for that and it's important. Um, was it Ms. Ms. Ferreira or Ms. Walker? I was seeing on the corner of my eye there. Had the hand up. Ms. Ferreira, yeah. Yeah, so um, yeah, definitely. Uh, I definitely agree with Ms. Pat in terms of, you know, make sure we, we're getting that information. Uh, in terms of what we've been talking about, like getting more input, one of the things that we can't, you know, kind of forget in terms of what we're doing with, with Dr. Love next week is also, Besides the organizations, we do need to think about what other individuals, you know, we want to also end up talking um, to, obviously kind of prioritizing BIPOC individuals first and then the other ones. So I think we need to make sure that we're also, you know, like for me, I think what I'm going to do is besides the organization, I'm going to send Ms. Moyston to my list of individuals um, with contact information so that then we're already putting together that list so we can bring folks in. Now, in terms of like input from the community, um, that is something though that we need to discuss in terms of, so how do we deal with this? I know that we're all kind of looking at it. Like for instance, Ms. Uh, Vera Cage sent a bunch of information, right? Uh, which, you know, I reviewed and obviously is, you know, is critical to our work. Um, but so are we just like individually just kind of reviewing these things and we hold on to it or do we, are we getting feedback in terms of what we're doing? Cause I know obviously when we meet, there's so much to do, right? So it's not as if we're going to have enough time to go through everything, but I think we need to have a process, I guess, um, when we do receive this input. I mean, already we already have the process where you, Mr. Wiley, respond to the community, which is great, right? So we already know that's happening. But a process for us when we're reviewing some of these things and responding. Also, we did get the uh, letter back from the town council. You know, they send that in. And so how are we responding mm -hmm. to that? You see what I'm saying? Um, and also just, just to remember, because when I saw the town council one, I was like, I think that we had said in that response that went out that we were also going to do something to be accountable or something. So, and we are, yeah. yeah. So we need to follow up with that, you know? So anyway, a lot of these different little things here, um, what are we doing with it and how do we provide the feedback process? What I'd like to suggest, and, oh, go ahead, Ms. Moyston. Go ahead. So I didn't know, because it just seems like a good opportunity, but I sent last minute out, in addition to the packet, a letter of support from the core equity team mm -hmm. that I believe I added in. So just wanted to let you guys know that that was there. And I got that, thank you. Mm -hmm. And you are a member of our community as well, and you sent something. Yeah. Yes. So I, and I, I thank you, thank you for that. People remember that you know, we're not only in this group, we're also community members. So, you know, we can do that. And thank you, Ms. Moisson, for that. And I think it brings to, to light, Ms. Burr, what you're talking about. We're, we're fielding lots of information from very different sources for very different reasons. And it would be incumbent upon us to, to have a process for, for dealing with that. And, um, and thinking about how to, how to deal with that more than simply acknowledging and thanking people for what they've done but people want to know are you you know are you listening to me and are you are, are you considering what i've said in in your work and so how we go about doing that is, is something we probably should put on our agenda and talk about uh and and i actually would like to put that on the agenda if we may for next meeting we can devote some time and give people some chance to 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 think through potential ways to, to receive and, uh, and process and incorporate information, you know, going forward. So, yes, Ms. Owen. Another question I had was um, when we were gonna review the answers to the survey, and I did make a separate flyer for just the link to the survey. Is there gonna be a cutoff time for when we're accepting those or? Mr. Vernon Jones? If we succeed in getting the consultant that our initial invitation to the bid are looking for, I would hope that we would let them be uh, participate with us in that discussion. 
Mm -hmm. Other comments? Do we have a sense, uh, Ms. Moist, of how many how many uh, respondents we have through that survey? I was trying to pull up Ms. Owen's survey um, flyer. I think there's oh, yeah, about 45. Sorry. 45? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Quick question, so, where's, where's the link again to the um, survey? I can resend it out to everyone. You can also just go to, if you go to our webpage, it's on our webpage. All right. But I will resend it. And I just have to stress that um, regardless what happens, the input from the community should just keep coming in because, you know, the BIPOC community does not feel very included in the policy and the making that is, happens here in Amherst. And so their input will help us make will help you guys make your decision and then that is important and that helps build the trust that we need yeah miss ferrera yeah and again like off of what like miss moiston had sent us which was really wonderful a lot of your um, feedback miss moiston and um recommendations and things i mean i liked um you know obviously we still need to talk about the ambassadors and how to use them yeah. wisely because i think we maybe that's another thing we need to add to the agenda because I think we need to be using them even right now. We don't have to wait for the consultant. We can already put them to work type of thing. So I think we need to figure out, you know, how much we're going to be paying them in terms of the stipend and then, you know, kind of set them out to work in terms of getting that information. And then second, um, the other one that I, I like that Ms. Moisson mentioned was kind of like the language specific um, you know, focus groups, you know, so that we are really kind of getting, you know, folks that are on the margin, that are marginalized, that will not, you know, they, they might not have access to virtual, you know, in terms of our town forums, obviously the language is an impediment, things like that, or other groups specific kind of focus groups, you know, um, that we could kind of reach out to. So I think that's another thing that we need to discuss that, you know, I thought Ms. Moisten, that was a great idea. Mm -hmm. Ms. Moisten. I just want to chime in that there's possibly a pot of money that we can use to pay the ambassadors. So it's not coming out of the 80,000. We don't have to worry about it on behalf of the, I don't know how that turned out of the um, consultant, but you know, Paul has looked into it and there might be available funds outside of that. Ms. Pat. I just want to publicly appreciate Ms. Moisten for taking the time to um, write us. And um, I was very impressed about your thoughts and um, your feedback because you know a lot, but you know, you're a very humble woman. So I really appreciate that, that you, you shared your thoughts with us. Thank you very much. So one other thing I wanna talk about is um, the letter from the, uh, Town Council Chair, I think we should read it out here. I think we should read the letter. I don't it's think I- the record so that people, oh, you didn't include it? I didn't include it because it came in so late. Like yeah. I was already oh, I trying to, okay. to send everything out and then it came and I'm like, I keep adding stuff and okay. I need to just I, get it out. So okay. we can put next it on the time. next agenda. Okay, one more Actually, thing. Yeah, sorry. go ahead, Ms. Pat, I'm sorry. So, you. One more thing is that when we, are ready to do our apology to our BIPOC community about the incident at the public forum. I think we should include that letter um, from the chair. I think we should post it in Ames Bulletin. I think some people have approached me and said, what is that all about? They don't have time to view the YouTube. So we need to be transparent so that people follow you know, what really happened. So combination of our apology to BIPOC community, and then, you know, the letter that we got from the council through the chair. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Ms. Pat. And actually was making some notes on potentially what could happen at our next meeting. Um, I did, I did want to offer the group since I've been, you know, taking some notes here uh, on some topics that, that might need uh, some guidance and some direction. So uh, what I'd like to offer the, the, the working group is a draft 
if I could, Ms. Moise, and say, Here, here's a draft of some topics we've discussed, and here's some guidance on how we might want to go forward and get your responses to those so we don't lose lose them in the, in the fray, so to speak, but and then find places to put them in our agenda because it, it's quite busy when you think about it, and we're going in a number of different directions. And I'd be happy to share that uh, the earlier than later with the with the working group and have you all comment on it to see if I've left any gaps or um, or needed to you know include something else in 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 this guidance, um, just as a way to sort of frame our, our discussions as well and reminders to people of what we're thinking about doing. For example, like the the letter to our our own uh, BIPOC community. Uh, in regard to the community forum. I mean, that that's that's kind of in process. I think there are folks thinking about that. So, you know, putting that back out there and, and keeping these things on, on, the, on the agenda, uh, you know, reviewing the process for how to, you know, uh, take in information, you know, from the community and what we do with it. So just offering some thoughts and guidance on it to get your response. And then we can place them strategically in our agendas so we don't we don't lose them and have to revisit them, you know, over and over again. So if that's acceptable, I'd like to start that at least, and then uh, see what folks think and get some feedback. Thumbs up. Okay, my own thumbs up. Uh, so let's see. So we're all good on. Item C for the moment. I don't think this should take long at all. This thing about the action review is just a question really I had for this. Uh, I think when I offered this idea of an, of an action review, I simplified it in the document that uh, I sent to you all with the, with the offer at the bottom. Like this could be part of a meeting where we could just basically answer those questions in a, in a round table kind of thing. Um, and I'd be happy to take that information and put it together and say, here's what, you know, here's what we intended to do. Here's what actually happened. Here's what we learned. And, you know, how does it inform our stuff going forward? And I didn't know, I don't want to put extra burden on folks in terms of writing stuff. So that's why I said we could probably do it in, in a meeting if we gave it some forethought and we just went around and asked those questions. I wanted to see whether uh, a written response would be better or uh, a conversation in our group might, might be better slash easier for all of us. So that's my question to you. And I'd like to hear your response. Ms. Ferreira. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I think that that could work. Um, my one question would be, because when I look at it, it, it seemed kind of like broader questions about the event itself, but also I was interested in kind of like what were like the key takeaways that mm -hmm. we each might have learned from just based on the information. Um, so I guess we could do it um, in a meeting, but I, I actually was thinking like we would kind of send those in to you or something and you could collate it that's what i was kind of thinking but um i could do it either way and it, it's not it certainly in light of what you're saying it's the the whole idea is actually to um expose our learning what you know what what did we actually learn from this you know um for example i think you know there's we, we did learn and or get uh, was reinforced or relearned, I should say, how difficult it is for people to access, uh, you know, make commentary in, in that kind of a format. If you don't have um, access to, to, to virtual communication. Also how difficult it is as, as a, a BIPOC person to be able to go on screen and say something publicly about that, those, those are some learnings. So I think it doesn't have to be extensive, but I think just to walk through back through that to see, you know, 
exactly what those questions are, including what you're saying, Ms. Ferreira, about, you know, what else did we learn and what could we learn from that? Because we're going to have more conversations with folks going forward. We're going to continually learn more things and the we want to make it as strong and as effective as possible. That's the, the, the goal of that. It, it's not it's not a scientific study necessarily, but certainly a way to say to take pause and look at what we're doing. So I could do it either way. I could take written comments from folks. Uh, it, we could do it at, at take you know 15 minutes at a meeting and do it. Either either way or a combination of both. I I I I think it would be worthwhile for the group. Other thoughts, Ms. Pat? I'm flexible. If people feel that they need time to think about it and send in their feedback, or if we want to discuss it during the meeting, either way is fine with me. Other folks? Let me ask a different question. Is this something you don't want to do? I want to do it. And it's okay if you don't want to do it. I'm, you know, I'm just saying, but because this is this is an idea. Ms. Walker. I just don't feel strongly about it in either direction. So it is something that I want to do and I think we should do, but I I don't, I'm not for doing it in person or for sending answers. I think either way could work. Okay. Um, and I'd be willing to do it either way. Ms. Owen? Maybe it would be stronger if we did a letter just because we could respond as a group rather than doing a video, um, doing doing it during a meeting where we all are participating. But if we write it out, then we're um, one voice apologizing for everything that happened and all of our voices are heard. Okay, I wasn't necess necessarily focusing on the apology as much as the whole process of us listening to people in the community, that, that whole activity of community forum, you know, how we managed it, how we organized it, those kinds of things about, maybe I didn't make myself clear. I'm sorry, I misunderstood that. Um, yeah. That's the case, it could go either way. Yeah, Any other comments before we move on? Ms. Pat? It looks like we're not ready to do the discussion today. So well, not why today. don't I propose no. that we send in our response through Ms. Uh, Ms. Marston. Okay. I will, I'll resend something out that, uh, you know, doesn't necessarily go into all the whole thing about action at review, but just pose several questions for folks. And um, as you get that back to me, I'll put it together in one document and we'll have it. That's all. I mean, I, I think it's just an important thing to do. It's not necessary that we do it tomorrow mm -hmm. kind of thing for sure, but certainly, uh, uh, you know, something we could probably use in the future. So thank you. Well, I'll, I'll do that that way. Get back to folks. So, gift certificate proposal. I know that's something we wanted to talk about. Uh, Ms. Pat, let's go for it. So, do you want to put it up for us? Okay. So, um, I'll just give credit. So. Ms. Owen, she did most of the work and uh, I did give some input. So I want you guys to review it. If you have any questions for us, then we can respond. So we, we tried to include, you know, some input from last week um, discussion, but we tweaked it a little bit. For example, the raffle Instead of $100 raffle, we are suggesting four raffles, $25 each, for example. And um, 
in terms of um, compensating uh, uh, people with lived experiences, we didn't limit it to just BIPOC. Like we have some uh, residents that you know talked about the experience experience uh, having family member with like mental illness, for example, it was a difficult thing for that person to share in writing. So um, we are recommending that everyone that spoke about their lived experiences at both a uh, public forum and people who sent us lived experiences by either email or through the online website, we should compensate them for $25. Um, give certificate. Uh, Ms. Owen and myself, we um, talked about, we identified some BIPOC um, owned businesses and we kind of left like restaurants at this time because of pandemic. We, you know, we're recommending that you guys consider four and that would be um, M&M uh, Link Jewelry. Um, they've been in town for more than 15 years now uh, from Jamaica. Mm -hmm. um, they have presence online. They have uh, uh, social media presence, um, Facebook, sorry. And then Global Cuts is owned by uh, BIPOC. And he has some BIPOC folks that work for him, uh, that work there. And then MS Extension and Beauty Salon is the only black owned hair salon in town. And then Gills Auto Repair and, and Performance is on Route 9 across from Cumberland Farm. Um, uh, he's a BIPOC uh, business owner, um, Spanish guy. Actually my business, um, we deal a lot with uh, transportation so he's in, you know, he, that's where we send our vehicles um, uh, for repair. And I'm encouraging people to please support him um, and other BIPOC businesses. Uh, who else? So that's, if you want to chime in, uh, Ms. Owen. Um, I don't think I have anything else to add, but I did want to also give Ms. Pat credit for, um, bringing to light that we should add um, people who emailed their experiences to us to be eligible for the raffle because the experiences that we are emailed are very valuable. Even though they weren't able to come to the forum, um, they were still able to be vulnerable to us over email. Yes, Ms. Moisten. So the I I just want to chime in about the businesses. Are, you guys are not going to include the restaurants. My thought is that they, okay. So some people are choosing to you know eat out, and I want to support restaurants. They and at the same time, hmm, how do I put this? And some people are still waiting before they go out to eat or order food. I know some people are like that, so. Mm -hmm. Well, so my thought process is first of all, I'm interested to know how do we get a gift card that's gonna relate to all of this? Like the only people that I know that typically do that is the chamber, but I mean, it, the gift cards don't go bad. That's a good point. Right. And I'm just a little concerned because, you know, like El Camelito deserves to be on there. And, you know, there's crazy noodle. You know. yeah, so I don't want to get into the businesses because I shouldn't do that. But I, you could probably broaden it a little bit. And, you know, I can send you some more list of BIPOC businesses. And that are not necessarily restaurants either. Thank you. Mr. Vernon Jones. Well, I appreciate the work of the subcommittee on this. I think this is great. Uh, I would I would include restaurants. People, you know, can wait till the pandemic is over or lots of people are getting takeout food uh, to support them. 
Um, and if uh, Baku's was still in business, I certainly wouldn't want to leave them off. Thank you for sharing. Good point. Other other comments. I mean, I, I want to echo uh, Mr. Vernon Jones's comments. This this is great work to to, to get this off and running, and I think it's an, an it's an important response to our BIPOC community. I would also support uh, because I I'm noticing, you know, there are a number of of BIPOC restaurants who are not on on the list. For example. And um, so, if there were, if there were a way to make that happen, then that's that's great. I would like you know have the subcommittee think about that, Ms. Walker. Um, I think this is a great draft, and I would I would support using it um, with just the addition of whichever other businesses Ms. Moyston can come up with. So, if if we were just to add those businesses in the section where we have the other ones listed, I think it would be perfect. I don't think it needs any other edits, but then also Ms. Moyston did say she's not sure if we'd be able to have a gift certificate available in this manner. So I'm wondering if that's something we can look into and find out if we can make that happen because I think this is a great proposal. Thank you, uh, Ms. Ms. Pat. Actually, what we did in our subcommittee um, with the businesses that were listed, um, we did a um, outreach and discuss, and they were very appreciative that uh, we're thinking something along this line. And um, they were very flexible as to how the payment will go. And um, one of the discussion was if, we, if somebody decides to, to, decide to choose their business, if we send them a gift certificate that we design to your place and then maybe the town can reimburse you type of thing and they were okay with that the fact that we thought about them was a big deal like mm -hmm. nobody has ever done that for them in town and i you know and i appreciate uh, your sentiment mr ross but that's a different story when it comes to town supporting um Bakus when I was open. It's a long mm -hmm. story. So, but anyway, in terms of um, BIPOC uh, owned restaurants, I know them, we know them, and we will include them. That's no problem. It's just um, mm -hmm. we, we were thinking more during this pandemic mm -hmm. more than anything else. I would love to include all the BIPOC businesses. I know most of them. So, uh, we know most of them, so mm -hmm. we will include them. There's no problem. Mm -hmm. I wish we thought about after pandemic, they can still use the certificate. Mm -hmm. I was I was thinking of immediate, right. and that's me. If I get a gift certificate or gift card, I want to use it right away. Otherwise, <laughs> I lose it. I forget it. And so that's that was my thinking. Like so, good good feedback. Thank you. We will we will fix it. We all forget those gift certificates, Miss Pat. Don't worry about it. It's okay. Miss <laughs> Ferreira has her Ms. hand up. Ms. It's been up for a uh, while. Who? Miss Ferreira. Where did she go? Okay. They always, she went off screen. I see her now. Thank you, Miss Miss Ferreira. Yeah, sorry. You know, my internet is acting up, so I have to kind oh, of. Oh, yeah. Out. Sorry yeah. about that. So, anyway, yeah, I, I was basically, I'm in agreement with that. There are other BIPOC. Um, uh, restaurants or businesses for us to just expand it and include it so that we can help all of them. Yeah, so no, you. yeah. Mm -hmm. So basically Pat, no yeah. expiration, right? Yes. Say it again, so, Ms. Pat. So basically the certificate will have no expiration is what I'm hearing, correct? Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah. Even, even after we're disbanded, correct? Right. Right. Okay. Okay. Uh, Ms. Moyston. Yep. I just, I think the only time is if they put a limit, but you don't have to put that limit. I would actually suggest, or any of us could do it actually. 
and I can do it as well, to check in with the chamber because they have a gift certificate that includes multiple businesses. And you can take that gift certificate card and go anywhere and they just subtract the balance off the, the total off the balance. And I don't know how they reimburse the restaurants or how that piece happens. Mm -hmm. But I, I like because I don't know anything about this, and perhaps you do. I, I just, I, I don't know anything about how that works. They could do it the very same way that you have suggested that we do it. Is that you just get the reimbursement? Yeah, Ms. Pat. So, um, in our subcommittee, we did discuss if we give a blank gift card or gift certificate, people can use it to purchase things elsewhere besides by park. So it would be very critical that we have a we have blank gift certificate where somebody indicate where they would like to spend the money. Then we can just fill in the business they, they choose rather than giving people the certificate they can use it to buy from, you know what. Mm -hmm. Ms. Moisten. I'm not, I just, I think that you can keep it limited so that the people have the choice and they can bring that gift card to any of the business that we list and only those businesses. That's what the chamber does. Like they give out these gift cards and they have a list of businesses and you can only go to those businesses with the gift card because it's part of a program. So this would be part of a program. We could right. make it would list. be the community safety working group, you know, we make our own list. Community members supporting business, local BIPOC businesses, or however you would like to name it, but it's just a list and you can go and they just subtract the, the balance. Yeah, Ms. Walker and then Ms. Pat. So just a clarifying question for Ms. Moisten. So basically they can tailor it to the, to the places that we choose. Okay. Ms. Pat. So I'm not opposed to that. I think that's an option. Um, my preference, and I'm, I mean, it's good to collaborate with Chamber of Commerce, that I would rather have um, us handle that, our committee, CSWG. Is that what you? I am. I'm just curious about the process that they use so that the card can be applicable to the multiple businesses at one time without being able to go to another business outside of that branch, right? And how that money exchange happens, that's all. I wasn't saying that we should in involve them. This should be completely community safety working group, community mm -hmm. members supporting, you know, our local businesses. So that's all. I, it, there was nothing else to that. I mean- Ms. Bowman, you have yeah. your hand up. So we have a list. A BIPOC community, a BIPOC restaurants, businesses. We take that list to the Chamber of Commerce, right? Chamber, yeah. The no. Chamber. no. Oh, um. So Mike, I, I wouldn't take it to the chamber. We don't want to do that. And not only that, but the chamber has iffy relation or, or they're not connected with some of these businesses or they have iffy, they have to have their own bridge connection fixed. And so we just want to take their, I, the, their pro, maybe, we don't have to, but maybe take their process and, and, and see if we can use that for. Right. for okay. Us. So. Now I'm more clear about it. Yes, we should. I agree that we shouldn't put necessarily put them like have that nothing to do with them, but use their process because it doesn't make sense. It's it's too. We have so much work to do. We don't need to be adding. Oh, who's gonna you know fill out the gift certificate for such and such? We just need to be able to hand out the gift certificate. They're already. We already have the businesses on there named. Who these are the only people who can take this gift certificate. So it's already the BIPOC businesses. We already have them outlined. They don't have a choice. They have to use one, use it at one of those those locations. Am I correct in that understanding? Ms. Pat. Yes. So I guess Ms. Moisten question is how uh, how is CSWG going to reimburse these businesses? And I'm repeating myself when I spoke with them, they said they're going to do this on a uh, trust that they will provide the service. I didn't talk to any 
restaurant that the POSAC talked to said, yes, they'll provide a service and then the town had, you know, will reimburse them. They didn't have problem with that, but you're saying, you're I, so asking I, about the process. I, I just what would I, I mean I can just do it tomorrow and then I can send an email out to you and Ms. Okay. Owen and or whomever else would like to know but just to understand how their process works and how they reimburse I'm a little skeptical of to having too many gift cards out there and right. not having an actual cash amount or really? somehow having a, a, a transparent function through that oh. like right mm -hmm. like I the one thing that I don't want to have happen is we say we're gonna give global cuts $25 for this person going to get, and then that $25 not make it, not because we didn't do our part because it gets lost in translation. Like I just, I'm not saying that it would, but I just, I don't want to do anything on, like I want to make sure that it's, it we have everything covered. It's a lot of work to follow up and keep up with at the same time. So I, you know, I just want to make sure we have considered all the different ways that we can do that because then I, somebody has got to track it. Right, and that's that part becomes um, I'll, tedious. I'll track it. I, I'm a businesswoman. I'll track it. I don't have a problem with that. Okay. Yeah. I'd like to suggest we just we move forward with, with this. I don't think we have to belabor this too much longer. And Ms. Owen and Ms. Pat can work with Ms. Moiston to to refine the process. And you know whatever you, you come up with a final recommendation for us, I think we're in good shape with that. I, I think there'll be enough guardianship over it to make sure it works right. So uh, we'll entrust you to, to make that happen. And, you know, just and thank you for doing it. I mean, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a great initiative. And I think it shows a lot of in, integrity too for the process we're trying to promote. Um, it's uh, 7.32 and we're almost done. <laughs> um, I'd like to just move right now to upcoming events if there are any that people want to uh, know. Ms. Moisson, you seem to always have an upcoming event. You save I've the day to, for us every I've time. Had to, I've had to change the date of the Black History Month, but it is set for the 16th, which is next Tuesday at 5.30 p.m. And Miss Pat's gracious, beautiful family and Miss Tashina Bowman's beautiful family and Alicia Walker, send me some photos. We'll be all nicely plastered in a video, Mr. Wiley, you as well, Miss Ferreira. And, and so it'll be very nice. No, no um, Miss Owen and Mr. Vernon Jones. What time on Tuesday? 5.30 p.m. Thank you so much. Wait, what's the date again? I'm sorry. What's the date again and time? It's um, February 16th mm -hmm. at 5.30 p.m. And I can send you guys all the Zoom link. It'll be great. And we did celebrate our first Lunar New Year. It was fabulous. I mean, oh, I had a I Zoom issue because oh, I always have a Zoom issue. But besides that, it was fabulous. I missed it. Congratulations. Yeah, I missed it too. Ooh. Glad it went well. Yeah, yeah I'm sure. So our next meeting, uh, I'm sorry, go ahead, Ms. Owen. I, I didn't realize you had something. No, it's okay. Before we move on, I just wanted to bring to the community, uh, the CSWG, um, Safe Passages is coming to do an in-service for some of the mentors that I work with at my job. Um, one thing that really struck me looking over the information from the Amherst Police Department was that since 2017, the domestic violence in Amherst has almost doubled. Safe Passages is coming to talk about prevention, supporting people who are experiencing domestic violence and other community resources. If any of you guys are interested in attending, I can send you a link. I think this will be helpful to inform our work with alternative safety and also getting more connected with um, other providers in the community. Yeah, would you please send that to all of us? Yeah, just send that'd be great. Yeah, I would like thank that. you for that. Okay. Next meeting date, next week, the 17th. And we're getting our agenda items to Ms. Moiston by Friday. Is it noon, Ms. Moiston, or one? One o'clock is okay. Okay. Agenda items, Ms. Moiston, uh, by one o'clock uh, Friday. And, and we'll move forward. Um, I think we all have our stuff to do, Ms. Mr. Vernon Jones. I wondered if I could suggest an agenda item now 
Sure. Uh, I was thinking that uh, Tashina brought our attention to the article about the Denver program. And I thought it might be useful for us to look at that article together, hopefully read it ahead of time, and kind of go through and say, you know, is this sort of what we're talking about? Are there things here we definitely want to do? Are there some things we don't want to do? Are there some things we need to learn a lot more about? Uh, it just seemed like it would give us a little um, advance picture of the territory we're heading into. Let's put it on. That's one <laughs> among others that we're going to have, certainly. Yeah. So, Faith. So, you heard that one, Ms. Moiston, already? Yeah, I have it down. Okay, thank you, Ms. Pat. So, Faith, yeah. IFB um, phase two and also um, the gift certificate, final draft. Thank you. Ms. Walker. Uh, and then I just wanted to clarify because I was unsure if we came to a consensus on this earlier, but are we going to be inviting uh, Ms. Mrs. Dr. Love, I, I couldn't remember her title, to our next meeting? Yes. Yes. Okay. And do we know, like, are we going to just be like allotting a certain amount of time that we allow to engage with her? Or how is that going to work with our also abundance of agenda items for next week? Well, what I've been, oh, go ahead. I'll defer to you, Ms. Moisten, and then I'll go ahead. I mean, I would just suggest to put Ms. Love at the top of our agenda. That's what I was going to say. And then, you know, if you guys have a preference of how you want the following items that were just mentioned to be so that you make sure we get to a certain one, then let me know and we can order them as so moving forward or for the meeting, if that makes sense, right? So she, Miss Dr. Love would be A, and then if you guys felt like the gift card really needed to be discussed, then that would be item B. But you guys didn't care so much about the Denver program, then that would be the last item on the agenda. Mm -hmm. Can I also, while, while we're on this, and then, then we'll go, go to end this quickly. Um, I've noticed at several meetings we've had that there's an item on our agenda, sort of like a members, a members report. And I've also noticed that over the last several meetings, we've had virtually no public comment. While we do have to have public comment, I'm wondering if we'd have any issue of leaving off the other, the member report, as we are very capable of talking about what we're doing and what we're experiencing in the course of our conversation as a way to just, can you know, free up more time in planning our schedule for the meeting. Don't know how you all feel about that. I see one thumbs up from Ms. Pat. I'm good with that. Welcome. Sound good? We could yeah. try it? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. You want to eliminate the just the CSWG, the CSWG member, CSWG report. member report? Yeah, just and see if, you know, because people will say, We've all, I've already heard some things today about their experiences, you know, our experiences. So we don't have to relegate that to a particular part. Maybe you can incorporate it in our discussion. Mr. Vernon Jones. Do we really need the gift card to come back? I'd be happy to trust our subcommittee and Ms. Moiston to take that forward without any more attention from us. We can take that off. Okay. Yeah, who put it on? That was I did. Oh, could it be just something in the packet? Mr. Ross is 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 trusting uh, folks with business background. Thank you. <laughs> it's a good idea. Let's do that then. Okay. Um, are all hearts and minds good? Okay. Uh, I am asking, but assuming there are no other items that uh, we need to bring up that. Uh, of the ones we brought up already that we're gonna move forward uh, that didn't come to me before 48 hours. Are we good there? And I'd like to take a motion to adjourn. So move. Mr. Vernon Jones moved, Second. seconded. Ms. Pat. Okay, all in favor, thumbs up. 
Meeting is adjourned at 7.40. Not bad, folks. Not bad. There. Not bad. Kiss those kids, Miss Walker. Good night. Okay. Good night. Have a good week, everybody. Bye-bye. Go and watch everybody. impeachment. What's that? Go watch impeachment. Oh, God. No. <laughs>